the principle of doing the work and you know do the work i find that that's actually that's become a uh, a very common phrase that's used in um, self-development it's used in the healthcare arena these days and i sometimes have to ask that question when you say do the work what it, what does that mean what does that mean so I'm going to mention it first in terms of, you know, what does that mean in terms of, you know, if you're working with a certain healthcare practitioner in terms of like physical health, well-being, how is it that your body is actually supposed to get healthy in that way? Well, you would see a healthcare practitioner or a medical doctor or physician. And the reason that you would do that is so that they can provide you with the resources, the things that A, you need to do from a physical, nutritional, mental, emotional point of view so that you can ultimately have an end goal of being well, not unlike how a coach will hopefully give their players a winning team strategy, but push comes to shove at the end of the day, it is the player who has to be able to play the game. Now, if of course, if the, the coach, if the doctor is not providing a winning strategy, it doesn't matter how talented the individual is, they're just gonna be spinning their wheel. So it's always important, you know, when working with the, the right kind of person that you do identify what's going on in your body. Is there interference to its normal ability to express health? And if so, how do you resolve that so that all of that good stuff can ultimately work? But on the other side of that, what does it actually mean? Well, one of the first things that it means is it means that you have to develop ultimately a, a sense of independence. So my own self, when I'm working with my clients, I do not want to ever create a sense of dependency where I can you know, keep doing this for them forever and a day, but they never actually become more resilient. They never become stronger on their own. It would be like you know, me saying, you know, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna help you win an Olympic gold medal. And how are we gonna do that? Well, I'm gonna do all of your training for you. I'll go to the gym, I'll do the running, I'll do all of that. But then you just rock up on the day and yeah, you'll be able to win, right? That is not the way that it works. In order for a person to actually reap the benefits, they're the ones who have to do, in this sense, the physical work. We just are making sure that the circumstances are correct so that that can happen. So from a physical standpoint, what that means is it means that you are taking good care of your body, that you are following the advice, you're doing any exercises you're prescribed, you're doing any um, nutritional you know, things that you are advised to do. But what it also means from the, the mental side of the equation, and this one, especially for me also, again, I'll own up to this, is easier said than done, especially if we are very much in our analytical brain. And what do I mean by that? By that, what I'm referring to is that when we're in the analytical brain, what we're doing is we're using past circumstances and things around us to ultimately direct, control, and determine this is what our behavior needs to be. As a consequence of that, it can actually be somewhat limiting in the sense that we just keep doing the same things that we've always been doing. Now, if we actually want change in terms of our health, our well-being, our life expression, if we keep doing the same things that we've always been doing, guess what? You know, we're not going to get there. And I'm not saying that we need to do a complete reversal of all things, because in that there's probably a large number of things that we're actually doing right. But what's useful is then to identify, okay, where perhaps is there maybe something that is limiting me? And then rather than by, you know, stepping into the analytical brain, what you do is you step into more of the creative brain. You start to use your imagination. You start to visualize. You vision what other possibilities could there, could be, could there be in my life and what would that look like? Because what that does is that opens your mind to other possibilities. And when presented then in that space with an opportunity for change, and again, change, you know, can be a very scary thing. And sometimes, you know, we do have to weigh up a number of different factors there. But when we do something different, even if very small, it invites and opens the possibility for other things to start to manifest in our lives. And as that relates then to health, as that then also relates to, you know, doing the work, when it comes to doing the work from the, the mental side of the equation, that's what we are referring to. We're referring to the ability to step outside of the normal, I need to control, I need to analyze everything, to I'm just simply opening my mind up to additional possibility, to creativity, to quietness, all of these other things, 
so that we may actually be open to receive and then act and make whatever changes would be necessary thereafter. A lot of moving pieces, certainly with that, and you know, by any stretch of the imagination, not one to, to master, but also very, very important one, not just if we're ever trying to solve an individual health issue, but really so that we can become more well-rounded individuals who are able to experience health and life in all of its true and proper dynamic.